You guys ready to worship? That was three of you. You guys ready to worship? (laughs) Happy Pentecost Sunday. Caleb read a verse this morning that he read over us. It's the whole chapter, so. It's the whole chapter. Get loose. Last night, my wife was snoozing. Holy Spirit was with me. He's always with us, but it's like, God, what do you want to say? What do you want to say right now? And I heard Psalm 29. So, went into um, Psalm 29, and I'm just going to read it from the Passion Translation for you all. Just open Open your hands, close your eyes, and go here where the scripture has taken us. Proclaim his majesty, all you mighty champions, you sons of almighty God, giving all the glory and strength back to him. Be in awe before his majesty, be in awe before such power and might. Come worship wonderful Yahweh, arrayed in all his splendor, bowing in worship as he appears in the beauty of holiness. Give give him the honor due his name. Worship him wearing the glory garments of your holy priestly calling. The voice of the Lord echoes through the skies and seas. The glory of God reigns as he thunders in the clouds. So powerful in his voice, so brilliant and bright. How majestic as he thunders over the great waters. His tympanic thunder topples the strongest of trees. His symphonic sound splinters the mighty forest. Now he moves Zion's mountains by the might of his voice. Shaking the snowy peaks with his ear-splitting sound, the lightning fire flashes, striking as he speaks. God reveals himself when he makes the fault lines quake. Shaking deserts, speaking his voice, God's mighty voice makes the deer to give birth. His thunderbolt voice lays the forest bare. In his temple, all fall before him with each one shouting, Glory, glory, the God of glory. Above the furious flood, the enthroned one reigns. The king God rules with eternity at his side. This is the one who gives his strength and might to his people. This is the Lord giving us his kiss of peace. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that we would would walk on the thunder of your voice this morning that we would worship on the thunder and lightnings of your rumble of your heavenly realm. We know it's here. We acknowledge it. We acknowledge you. We welcome you. We move in your rhythm this morning, and we just break free of every single thing that so easily entangles us in the mighty name of Jesus. on us. 
guys know what today is? Woo! It's Pentecost! Happy birthday, church. <laughs> this is where it all began. So we made arrangements with our intercessor team and a couple others. If we've spoken to you ahead of time, most of you are already up here. So just lift your hand up if you're one of those, okay, right now. Today would be an amazing day to ask the Lord for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit yes. before, today's the day. So we've asked some folks to be up here worshiping. Listen, they're facing this way, but it's okay. You can still come pray with them. Just come put your arm around one of them and say, pray with me. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want more of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Come on. Let's go.
say I'm unlocking new breakthrough in your prayer life and your intercession yes. and I was talking to somebody before service too about somebody in their family who has addiction and I felt that as soon as Jackie said that that the Lord is doing right now for those of you who have somebody in your family your friend group whoever that is struggling with addiction or abandonment issues or depression or whatever stronghold that's on their life I feel fresh oil and fire and breakthrough for that to break right now today that you're going to go back and you're going to carry something in your secret place with the lord and you're going to have fresh renewal and praying where you felt defeated and like i've prayed so long and haven't seen breakthrough breakthrough is coming right now it's in this room you can literally reach out and grab it so just ask the lord to give it to you ask the lord to give it to you because he's pouring it out breakthrough for the things that you've been carrying and interceding and praying for Pray out the Spirit. If you don't have your prayer language, that's okay. You might get it today.
Break our walls down, break off the unbelief. Spirit, break out heaven. Heaven, come down on the earth as it is in heaven. Break out, Spirit, break Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Faith arise.
mind today, isn't it? Peace and restoration. It started, well, it started a while ago with what he gave me to share about later today. And then Caleb read from Psalm 29, which ends in the restoration of peace. And then there was a word about addiction, and that came through to, uh, to action. And then, it, then the worship became about breakthrough. And church, we can say, yeah, God, do it. But there's a response from us, amen? Yes. There is something that happens that is absolutely powerful. I'm all yours, Lord. When we submit to the Lord, His presence is here. I would dare to say there's not one of us in the room that does not need a miracle, first or second hand, whether for ourselves personally or for an immediate family, friend, coworker, neighbor, whatever. I can't imagine one of us in this room not needing that. Can we just, can we go to the mat for it today, right now? If you need a miracle, or if you need one firsthand, family, friend, coworker, somebody like that, would you come up? Get out of your chair and come up here and let's pray. Let's come and submit to the Lord and say, I want to meet you here and I need you. I can't come through. I can't do anything with my power to make this difference. I can't get my, 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 my loved one saved. I can't see my mom healed from cancer. But you can, God. There's not one of us that can truly do it. There's not one of us that can make the difference. It's the Lord Holy Spirit, look at your people. If you believe the Lord can make the difference, if you believe the Lord can bring the miracle, if you believe the Lord can come through, lift your hands right now and say, Lord, I believe. Father, right now, we ask you simply to come through. We will stand where you told us to stand in a place of faith and in a place of victory. We will not strive in the flesh, Father, but we will believe in faith that your work on the cross is complete, that the work that you started on Pentecost goes on today. So, Father, birth a change in each of us today for everyone calling on your name in faith now. Ignite a fire in them that will, they will take and they will to the situations in their life, to these places that are dry and need miracles. Father, I ask in your name, Jesus, that next week we'll hear testimony after testimony of your miracles 
that came from you pouring out your spirit today. God, we praise you that Pentecost was not an event, but a beginning. That not one thing has changed. Oh my goodness, I wish you all could see this. I just opened my eyes. <laughs> Go. Church, right now, listen to me. I release you to lay hands on one another, okay? I release you to lay hands on one another. Just pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in understanding. But contend in the Spirit for each other's miracles right now. Worship team, if, if you want to go down and pray, you're released. Go, go pray.
We're just going to continue to give the Holy Spirit some time to minister. There are people receiving ministry. If you're back and you haven't come up, please come on. We're going to go on today, but we're just, you know, we have time. It's all good. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Lord, we just, um, we pray for Edith Watts. She's not here today. She's got a medical procedure on uh, Tuesday. She's getting ready for it. I thank you, Father God, just agree with me, church, 
at this root procedure, she's going to get checked out. She's going to have a good report. She's going to be of a clean yes. bill of health. Yes. She's going to be completely whole in your name, Jesus. Yes. Father God, for your touch this morning, oh, we praise you and we worship you. Holy Spirit, you do what no man can, and we will glorify and we'll worship you. The work is yours, and we are yours. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's good. Man. To, uh, to have these moments or seasons in your life where you say, is it really going to be okay? And they can take a lot of shapes, a lot of form. It could be health trouble. It could be relational trouble. It could be work challenge. It could be church related. But we all as people have been in this place where we're like, God, I, I don't know if it's going to be okay. <laughs> and I need to know. I, I think I know that the Lord's heart for us is for each of us to know today in all those valleys and all those places of desolation and all those places of discouragement and all those places where the air's thin 
God's saying, it's going to be okay. If you know it's going to be okay, can you say amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, you're so good. Could you just could you just worship him? Could you just praise him? Could you just thank him? <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Jesus. Amen. Now, listen. I want to say something that I want everyone to hear very carefully. I cannot begin to count the amount of miracles that we just went to heaven for, but it's a bunch. And we're going to see results from that. Amen? Now, I want you all to look me in the eyes. Forget me. It's not about me. Look up at the Lord. I was wrong for that. This is about God. Look up at the Lord and say, when you come through, I will give you the glory. When you come through, I will give testimony because it's all about you. Thank you, Lord. You just keep that posture before him because it's all about him. Whew. Man, God, you're awesome. Wow. My goodness. We want to remember baby Alora and the Bratcher family in prayer. You just keep them before the throne. Who's praying for them? That's right. Look around you guys. Come on. That's amazing. You guys keep praying. For that little baby girl is going to be whole and delivered and healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, it's my pleasure. It's my honor to ask a, a friend to come up. Children, you're released if you guys want to go upstairs to ministry. Bless them, Lord. But a dear friend of mine who's becoming a dear friend is here visiting from the Nagaland. Oh, it's muted. Operator error. So if church is boring, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> evidently. I mean, if your relationship with God is boring, you're doing it wrong. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Wow. <laughs> Will you throw me my water, darling? You're not going to throw it? Come on. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, I think, yeah, sure it is now. Let's pray for just a moment. <clears throat> Lord, Holy Spirit, you have been so amazing today. Hallelujah. And you're not done. That's not, that is to continue. Father God, I just, oh, we just praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that purity in the Spirit of God will rule and reign in this place. Touch a cold on my lips. I, it's no small thing to share your word right, as you're moving in such a way. Lord, I'm so keenly aware that you're in your, in, we are in your presence. So just purify everything that I have to say, Lord, and purify all of our ears <clears throat> and our spirits to be renewed and transformed by your word today. Thank you, Jesus, for so much that's already happened. And give us, I ask God, a supernatural ability to absorb all that you have for us today. In your name, Jesus, amen. Wow. You know, sometimes ministry can be hard, but then you have a day like this, and you don't care how hard it is. This is how church is supposed to be, amen? I mean, my goodness. The Lord put it on Alyssa's heart. I'm just going to teach into this for a minute before I get into my notes. The Lord put it on Alyssa's heart last night. Hey, you know what would be really cool is in worship if we offered uh, to pray with people to receive more of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that would be really cool. And so we did that. We were obedient. But the Holy Spirit had some, some things of more precision in mind today. And so he brought those words out through different people. Some of them over here on mics and some of the things that were whispered in my ear on the front but what happened today was about no one man. It wasn't just like my idea or the worship teams or something like that. It was the Spirit of God. And it happens because we yield to the Holy Spirit. And what's true large is true small. So as you walk away from that moment today, as you go forward, as you go about your day, as you go about your week, as you go about your life, take this with you. 
that when you yield to the Holy Spirit, it opens a door for his power to become alive in your life. Amen? If I say that with a soft-hearted firmness, because it's literally my heart pleading with you to capture that. Because that's where everything changes in your life. <clears throat> Caleb, I thought it was so cool that you opened the service with Psalm 29, which ends, uh, I pulled the verse up because it's literally a lot of the summation. I could have ended the message with it today, frankly. <laughs> the Lord led me to share about peace today, and I'm like, but God, it's Pentecost. I won't argue with you, but what? I don't understand. Psalm 29, 11, may the Lord give strength to his people, amen, and may the Lord bless his people with peace. And as I drew into this concept of peace, it started a few weeks ago. I knew it was for today, and I was confused. Like, how does that interact with Pentecost? Well, I'm jumping ahead of my notes, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We'll swirl them all up. It will get there eventually. What, what is our greatest need as humanity? Yeah, love. Love. That was really fun last week, talking about love. I had a, about half a dozen people come up to me after service last week and this week again and say, I'm so glad you didn't come up and ask me what my definition of love was. <laughs> so if we were one of those, come up here. And I'm just kidding. <clears throat> yeah, we desperately need love and we need lots of things. But what we need, I think, it's hard to say things authoritatively that are hard to quantify, but when I think about our greatest need as humanity it's to be reconciled with God. And then when you think about peace, we often think about peace as circumstances are hard, God's in the boat with us, Jesus is in the boat, so we can have peace. And that's very true. We can have peace when things are hard. But at the, I, I was talking to Mary before service, and the way I try to find truth is to distill or burn away. I try to turn the heat up on a concept and find the foundation of it by turning the heat up. And when I, when I think about peace, the greatest peace we can have comes from that reconciliation with Jesus. When we don't know the Lord personally, when we haven't begun friendship with him, when we haven't repented, when we haven't given our hearts to him and said, I'll live for you, it's very trying to find peace in any sort of way that actually goes to the depth of our soul. But when, but when we've given our hearts to the Lord, all of a sudden that peace is right there like an apple low and ready to pluck, ripe for the harvest. We can access it right away. And that's what I want to share about today. So many times we think about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we, we put some human terms on it, even unintentionally. It looks this way, it looks that way. And yes, it does. It looks like speaking in tongues or it looks like being, you know, we overcome by the power of the Spirit and we fall down. Uh, it looks like being louder or quieter or crying and, you know, the effects it has on us. And yeah, those things happen. But when the Holy Spirit pours out on us in a Pentecost moment, like what happened today, the effect is so much more than just physical or emotional. <laughs> things change. Not only in us, but around us. Our power, they were clothed in power. Don't leave the upper room, guys, until you're clothed in power, Jesus said. They were clothed in power. It's very hard to contain power without peace. And so many times we don't think of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as bringing peace, but I would assert to you today that that's actually what it does in some ways the most. That feeling of everything is going to be okay now is the peace of God. Philippians 4, 1 through 9. <clears throat> and we're going to be in the Amplified for one or two verses today. I happen to love the Amplified because it's loud. Just kidding. I love the Amplified because of all the words. I like loud stuff too. It's a good thing I had kids. So we got the Amplified up on the screen because I know not everybody carries it. Does anyone read the Amplified typically, like often? Yeah, you my people. What's up? I like it. It's hard to read sometimes, but it, you know what? It makes me slow down, which is good. I need to slow down. This is Paul's words written in chains and in prison to the church at Philippi. 
Therefore, my brothers, my fellow believers, my people, my family, the church was, this church was so precious to him. He saw it. He helped birth it. He birthed it. The Lord birthed it, but he was there at the very inception of it. So these people were literally so precious to him. Whom I love and I long for, my delight and my crown, my wreath of victory. He's bragging. He's telling how much he loves these people. Because of these things, stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. And there was two ladies whose names I will not even try to pronounce. He is telling them to agree and to work together in harmony in the Lord. Because sometimes we as people don't excel at that, amen? But he's reminding them like a good dad that they both love the Lord and serve him so they can agree together in the Lord. Amen? amen. So they have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of the fellow workers whose names are all in the book of life. He's reminding them their family. Rejoice in the Lord always, and that is to say, delight and take pleasure in the Lord. Again, I'm going to tell you, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, that's your graciousness, your unselfishness, your mercy, your tolerance, and your patience be known. Let it be known to all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything. So instead of being anxious or worried about it, in everything, in every circumstance, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. Is that not what we just did today? We didn't plan that. The Lord just puts it together. And the peace of God, when you do these things, the peace of God, which is that peace which measures, I'm sorry, reassures the heart, that peace. It transcends all understanding. And that's the phrase we're going to live in for a moment. Transcends all understanding. That peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Whose is it? It's mine too. Isn't that good? Boy, it's easy to be anxious, isn't it? If I asked you to, I won't, but if I asked you to show your hands, you'd either raise your hand or you'd be lying if you said you hadn't been anxious in the last, at some point. All of us, and this is not condemnation, all of us have anxiety rise at some point or another. Some of us are in a healthy place or we have a great habit built where the moment it kind of shows up, we whack a mole and we bonk anxiety and we deal with it and it has no voice in our life. There's times I've done that really well for a long time. And then there's times where the whack-a-mole the, the whack of anxiety, do you all know what whack-a-mole is? Yes. It's an important bit of understanding. There's times when anxiety rears its head and you listen to it. And you're like, oh, that could be true. Oh, I haven't thought about it that way. And you're sitting there and you're taking those lies and you're eating them for breakfast. And they become a part of you. That is why we're called to, in everything, by prayer and supplication, ESV, with thanksgiving, make our requests specifically known to God. The presence of Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit, when Abba Father, whether it's in your secret place, your quiet place with the Lord, or in a corporate gathering, when He shows up, it displaces. Just like when they put a big boat. Okay, so if Mike, forget the boat. When my kids fill the bathtub too much, guess what happens to the extra water? It's displaced. <laughs> the presence of God displaces those anxieties in your life. And thus, an interaction with the Holy Spirit can mean peace. The final goal is for that to be spread across the face, the face of the earth. It is literally what the Great Commission is. And it's not just so our emotions can be in line. I want you to stop and think about this for just a moment. Are any other beings created in the image and likeness of God? No, just us. 
There are some really cool creatures in the world. There's like whales that are as long as school buses. Elephants are amazing. When you think about dogs and the friendship that you can have with an animal, you think about all the kinds of birds and the way bees pollinate flowers and creation's an incredible, astounding thing. But not any of them are made in the image of God, except us, except you, every one of you. We're made in the image and the likeness of God. And then we went and ate the stupid apple in the garden. We were still made in the image and likeness of God, but now we inherited the fallen nature, which the finished work of Jesus on the cross dealt with as long as we appropriated. Amen? So, the greatest peace comes when we return by the reconciliation of Jesus that he paid for. The greatest peace returns to us when we resubmit ourselves to the Lord. Because then we walk as completely righteous, sanctified by the blood of God, just like they did in the garden. That's peace. Amen? Amen. Now that is the peace we're to share. That's the peace to give to others. That's why the Great Commission is so great. So let's look at that word understanding. In Philippians 4, verse 7, the peace of God surpasses all understanding. That's a huge statement. We've quoted, many of us have quoted that verse many times in our life, and it's easy to kind of buzz right by that. But man, when I read that, I just like all four tires locked up, and we had a skid break moment going, every ounce of our understanding. A.W. Tozer has a great teaching, which I didn't pull up to have on the screen. It's it's okay. Where he basically asserts the greatest thing that you can do, one of the greatest things you can do as a man, there's think, there's worship, there's serve, but but it's think. God gave, my dad, (laughs) my dad's watching. Hi, dad. My dad had a very uh, specific phrase he used to give me as a young man. And it was said in love, but it was really good and applies right now. God gave you a brain, son. Use it. Okay, you're familiar with this. Good. (laughs) Many times Christianity seems to, in some way, culturally try to oppose thought and reason. And that's ridiculous. It's a false paradigm. In James 3, we're called to, to, to ask for the wisdom of heaven. God loves when we use our thinking because he gave it to us. But even every thought, every thinking, even as inspired as it could be from the Lord, it's not sufficient to understand peace as we know it from heaven. Because that peace is broader and larger. That word understanding in the Greek is nous. I preached about nous which is our identity, our personhood, our, our, every part of the core of our soul is our noose. It's more than just our carnal brain. It's our conscious center where we know. You guys have a know or two? You got that thing in the pit of your stomach where you know that you know, right? That's your noose. The peace of God surpasses that. Surpassing, transcends Different translations. That word is, okay, this would be the very English way to say it, hyper-echo, hyper-echo, I guess. That was a good try, Chris. Thank you. You're welcome. In the Greek, that means to stand out. The peace of God stands out above anything that we can have on earth. It rises above anything that we can have on earth. It is over top. Get this. It is superior in rank, power, and authority. Today, we call on the Lord in our places of need. If you felt like he met you in that place, and if you felt a peace wash over you that's superior in power, rank, and authority to anything you feel on earth, raise your hand. Look, we can testify to the peace within us. And you know what's amazing about that? Is if you were here and you prayed in that moment, and you're like, I didn't feel that. It's okay. Our feelings don't always catch up to the word of God in our lives. Amen? So then you say, feelings in the name of Jesus 
submit, flesh. Submit, flesh. Because I want to know the truth from the Spirit of God. In Proverbs 4.23, we keep our heart with all vigilance. In some translations, it's guard your heart with all vigilance. Because from your heart flows the springs of life. <clears throat> My voice is hoarse because I was yelling when we were praying earlier. <laughs> I might have strained it. So if you were to guard your heart with all vigilance, if you were to watch your heart, if you were to keep your heart with all vigilance, I have a real simple question for you. Would you say that it's an average of this room Probably the average human experience in this room is that if not when we get home, certainly when we go to bed tonight, we would probably lock the doors of our house. Anybody here not lock their doors? <laughs> it's one or two. We don't have your address, so it's okay. If you live way out in the country, I suppose um, maybe you wouldn't, but uh, in general, I would wager that most of your cars are locked in the parking lot right now too, right? Right? And also, uh, I would probably say most of you would not uh, post online or just run up and tell somebody you're sitting next to the password to your bank account online. <laughs> Please don't. That would be a mess. Pastor Chris, the Fellowship of Believers and identity theft, and it's all your fault or all the words that, no, see, that's not it. We guard our homes with vigilance. Is that verse still up there? Hope throw that back up for me. For, for, Proverbs 4.23. <clears throat> Thank you, Miss Hope. We guard our homes with vigilance. We guard our cars with vigilance. We guard our bank accounts and our identities with vigilance. If somebody calls you and they're like, hey, can you give me your social security number? I'm going to be like, no. Can I have your credit card number? No. Because we guard these things with vigilance. And I want to tell you right now, most of us guard our hearts with way less vigilance than these really common sense things in our life. Stop and think. Leave that up for me, Hope. Stop and think for a moment the things that we let speak into our hearts. Maybe you're in social media. Maybe you're not. I'll tell you what. We all know social media will feed you a bunch of garbage. There's a lot of good there. There's great you can do with it. You can be a light to the whole world with it. You can keep up with people. If I don't post pictures of my kid now and again, I have family after me. Awesome. Social media is just a tool. If I thought about it ahead of time, pretend this was a hammer. I'd be holding a hammer. Hammers can build. Hammers can destroy. It's just a tool. It's an inanimate thing. It's easy to think, I'm not on social media, so I'm a bigger or better or beyond all that. I don't have that problem. Well, I'll tell you what, if the news is on in your house all day long, you do. <laughs> Guard our heart with all vigilance. Even if you don't have a TV, even if you never look at your phone and there's no social media, you, you could be Amish. I could be Amish if I shaved my mustache. And got rid of the buttons. Even if you... <laughs> Things you don't plan to say. I was going somewhere. Even if you have no electricity in your home, okay? And you did not watch TV. And you did not look at your phone. And you didn't even so much as read a newspaper. All it takes is entertaining a thought from the enemy directly, or from somebody that's being a conduit to a terrible thought that you're not taking captive. We're called to take every thought captive. Submit to Jesus in the name of Jesus. But it's easy to, to hear something, even through another person, and if your discernment is not sharp, if you're not washing your mind in the Word, you're going to sit there and you're going to harbor that, and that anxiety, whack-a-mole, is going to doubt. That unbelief is going to come up, and you're going to start agreeing with it without even realizing it. And you may as well go home, go to bed, and not lock your doors. Out of your heart flows your entire life. From that place, that 
place just between you and the Holy Spirit is where everything comes from that we do. And if he's on the throne of your heart, and I don't just mean in name only, I'm talking about if you are like living in this, God, does this grieve you? Does this align with your word? Level of discernment. Then your heart will be full of the Lord and it comes pouring out when the pressure is applied. Because let me tell you, when you squeeze a sponge, when you pressure, you know what's in there. If you have pressure in your, if you have pressure in your life, we all have pressure in our life, Chris. When you have pressure in your life and something comes out of your mouth or you entertain something in your head that does not align with the word of God, ask yourself, what's growing in the garden of my heart? What have I not dealt with? That's not condemnation. This is my sincere desire for you to experience peace of the Lord in your life. We know in the word it says it is impossible that troubles don't come. We know in the word it says that it rains on the just and the unjust alike. We are absolutely going to face challenges and trouble in this world. But when we guard our heart with all vigilance, we can walk in peace despite it. Amen? Amen. Now, if we know the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may desire, we know if the enemy goes around seeking to kill, steal, and destroy, right? Right? Paul, can I pick on you? What's up, dude? Let's keep going on the locking the house analogy. I'm going to drive it home real hard. If you knew, if you, and I know the answer is why I'm picking on you. If you, <laughs> if you knew, Paul, that somebody was going to break into your home, if you knew, if they stated the purpose and said, Paul, I'm going to come I'm going to break into your house. I'm going to check your house every night to see if there's an unlocked door. How would you respond to that? Would you be extra vigilant? Would you, make, would you check twice probably before you went to bed, make sure every lock was, was put? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> right, I know Paul. Paul's thinking like, well, if they did break in, here's what I would do. <laughs> That's what I thought about you. I get it. The goal is to keep the enemy out completely. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of Christians that have put a lot of work in. There's a lot of pastors at a lot of pulpits. There's a lot of us in counseling meetings. There's a lot of us in our prayer closets trying to figure out how to cope with the enemy in our life instead of be delivered and healed. Get him out of your house and lock the door. Stop trying to figure out how to live with this roommate that's terrible in your home. You can be free. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's for everybody. <clears throat> My voice is still hoarse. <laughs> We're going to land it right here. Scotty, you can come up and play. Oh, it's okay, darling. Poor baby. <laughs> Colossians 3. There's all sorts that I could share with you. There's all sorts that I could say. But I also am a really firm believer in not, um, I don't know. It doesn't need to be. This was what was on the Lord's heart today. And I'm going to hand it to you and leave it at that. Amen? Amen. It's better. I don't care if we preach for an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 25 minutes one day or, I don't know, I didn't time myself, 20 or 30. That's not the point. We're not more holy because we went extra long. And we didn't do a better job if we ended short. Amen? Amen. It just made someone uncomfortable, but that's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just, I know what the Holy Spirit has given me and I don't want to go beyond that. It's, his presence is too precious. Colossians 3, verse 1, 2. Oh, I moved it to the Amplified, didn't I? I got to change it. I got to pull mine up now. You can't hear the, they need a sound effect in an iPad for when you're flipping pages. Wouldn't that be something? Would y'all just stand? Let's just end with prayer. 
there was a lot of ministry that was happening earlier today. And I just want to tell you, if, um, if you weren't done with praying somebody, a second's like a thousand years for the Lord. It doesn't matter. You can pick it right back up after service and just continue. Be free. Just close our eyes and just let the Lord put this into our hearts. This is his word. Therefore, if you've been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, so our, he raises our spirits from death, church, then I'm going to exhort you. I'm, I'm asking you, I'm telling you, this is what you do next. If you've been raised with Christ, then keep seeking the things that are above. That's where Christ is. He's seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind, set it, set it firm. That means make decisions about what it's gonna be and then stay there. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth because they only have temporary value. Just agree with me in prayer. Father, you have lifted our eyes to heaven today. You have given us peace and you have told us that everything is gonna be okay. When we think about the humanity in this room, we could literally make a list if we could somehow put on the screen every thought and every feeling in every person's heart in this room, we would see opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for a miracle. We would see lists, hundreds of items long of impossible situations we're believing you for. Places where we can't do it. We can't go make peace somewhere, but you can. Through us sometimes, but you can. So whether directly, through indirect means, through us as a conduit, God, we ask you right now for peace to rule and reign in each of these impossible situations. And not just peace that kind of makes it okay, not earthly peace, not peace as our understanding understands it, God, but peace that passes our understanding. Peace that means reconciliation with you. Peace that means on earth like it is in heaven. Like you told us to pray, Jesus. So bring that peace into every one of the things we've petitioned your throne for today. Doubt has no place. Fear has no place. Unbelief, you have no place. Anxiety, you're finished in the name of Jesus. You're gone. We will walk in your peace. Enemy, when you try to bring those voices back to our minds, when you remind us of our failures or you remind us of earthly circumstances, I say we will laugh in your face because you're nothing. You have nothing to offer us but lies and destruction and death. We don't want any part of that. We will agree with the Lord. We will agree with his word. It is yes and amen. It's the beginning and it's the end. And the word was Jesus. Father God, we plead your blood over these things. We commit them to our hearts. We thank you for the mountains moved today, the ones that you did move already and the ones that you're going to. We rejoice from a place of faith, even not knowing what you have done already, but knowing that the righteous prayers, the fervent prayers of a righteous man affect much. Well, much was affected today. Today was a day of beginnings and we will continue, Lord. In your name, Jesus, amen. I love you, church. Like I said, if you are in ministry with somebody and you wanna continue, continue. Otherwise, you're free. We'll see you next week. Love you.